Hi, it's Katrina. From cheetahs in ancient Egypt to importing giant hippos, here are 10 animals that so far we have never been able to domesticate. Number 10, the rhinoceros. There are two species of rhino in Africa and three in Southern Asia, but no matter where they are, they're a dominant force among the local wildlife. They can grow to as much as a ton in weight, and despite being herbivorous, they can have a mean temper and never shy away from fighting for their survival. This temperament means that rhinos are virtually impossible to tame, let alone domesticate. They simply won't accept a human as the head of a herd and can be deadly to anyone that approaches too close. Add this to the fact that their pregnancy takes 450 days and may take as long as 12 years to reach sexual maturity. It would take decades to breed desirable traits. Animals that have been domesticated, for example, typically take less than a year to give birth and reach maturity within a few years. There are, though, interesting stories about rhinos that have been tamed in one way or another. There are some records of war rhinos being used in battle in Constantinople at some point in the 16th century, perhaps using their nature to human advantage. Whether this was a rare, docile one that obeyed its master, or simply a story meant to deter aggressors is not entirely clear. Number 9. Cheetahs Cheetahs have had a prominent role in history, with images depicting them wearing collars from thousands of years ago. The Egyptians believed that they carried their spirits away after death, and there is even extensive evidence of humans using them to hunt for gazelle, foxes, and hares. With all of these examples of cheetahs working alongside humans, it's perhaps a surprise that they haven't ever been truly domesticated. But the truth is that the wildcat never really leaves their personalities. They can just be suppressed when kept in captivity. Domestication, though, requires calmer traits to be bred into a species, and this is the main stumbling block with cheetahs. They really don't like to breed in captivity. They have a very elaborate courtship ritual, which is only possible in the wild. The process involves the females attracting the males, and then begin activities that take place for a number of days, with mating happening as many as five times a day. Giving the space and privacy required in captivity is a mammoth task, so it is most likely cheetahs will never be fully domesticated. That's what savanna cats and bengals are for, and even they can be kind of wild, depending on how far removed they are from their wild ancestor. Number 8. The Fox the first step to domestication is the ability to tame an animal, and it's this that proves to be a step too far when it comes to foxes. There are 12 species of true fox, with another 25 that are sometimes called foxes, and whether that be the red fox, the kit fox, or the arctic fox, people have long wanted to be able to keep them as pets. People who do have foxes as pets, or when they are rehabilitating them, talk of a stubborn wildness that's impossible to get rid of. No matter what's done to try and control them, their natural instincts get the better of them. However, this doesn't mean that people don't keep trying, and there's one experiment that's had more success than most, and has resulted in the only tame population of foxes in the world. It began in the 1950s in Soviet Russia, where silver black foxes were selectively bred. This experiment was started to explore the evolutionary history of foxes and to see how domestication changes animals at the most basic level. They found that the aggressive and fear-avoiding responses had been eliminated within three generations. By the fourth generation, the foxes were beginning to act more like dogs. But despite the progress, this experiment is far from over and still yet to achieve true domestication. And now for number seven. But first, if you are new here, welcome and be sure to subscribe before you leave. Number 7. The Raccoon Despite being so cute and cuddly, raccoons make for terrible pets and are even further away from being domesticated. The first problem is their inability to be house trained, so unless you have a particularly docile one, you won't be able to teach them even the most basic of tasks. They also bite a lot and are very destructive to anything they find around the home. Raccoons are very intelligent and are master thieves, so they can break into areas you try to keep them away from, and they will always act out when they're unhappy or hormonal. It's for these reasons that keeping raccoons as pets is illegal in many places, and unfair on the animal unless it's a rescue that has no chance of going back into the wild, which is also the case with foxes. This rebellious behavior and the difficulty of selectively breeding them in captivity has meant that the desired traits can't be effectively passed on to new generations, and domestication is very unlikely. They are truly wild at heart and need the big outdoors. Number 6. The Zebra Horses have been domesticated for centuries and were vital to human development around the world, 
So why can't the same be done with zebras? After all, they're very closely related to equines, right? Attempts have been made to tame zebras countless times, and it was a much sought after thing in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. There were large populations of them in the countries being colonized at the time, and it would have saved huge resources being able to use them rather than having to import horses. It's just never gone too well. One-off attempts at taming individual animals have been possible. There are images of zebra-drawn carriages in central London, for example, but breeding herds for human use have proven to be far more difficult. The reason for this is that they are native to the African landscape, where they encounter dangers not seen by other equine species. The risk of lions, leopards, hyenas, and many more predators means that zebras have developed a number of defense mechanisms, like jumping big distances, having bursts of violence, and being easily agitated. While this allows them to survive in the wild, they are traits that make taming them a thankless task. Also, unlike horses that evolved for a long time before humans arrived, zebras evolved alongside our ancestors, and so are hardwired to see us as threats. This means that there are some major hurdles to overcome before they can be truly domesticated, ones that could possibly never be tackled. Number 5. Dingoes Found across Australia, dingoes are a type of dog native to the continent. Despite humans being present there for a long time, dingoes have continued to be a pest for farmers, preying on their livestock and haven't ever been domesticated, unlike their close relations. While they have many traits that would make them seem ideal candidates for domestication, such as having a pack mentality and being happy to eat most things, including leftover scraps, there are innate behaviors like their aggression that emerge no matter how young you start training them. Because of this, dingoes earned a bad reputation and have been regarded more as a danger than a potential pet. Some groups are becoming less fearful of humans and risk trying to steal food from them and might even attack which means people are less and less likely to try and tame them as opposed to simply getting a dog. Number 4. The Tiger Tigers are very large and strong cats, and it's impossible to fully tame them, let alone domesticate them. The main reason for this is their aggression and their diet. As meat eaters, it's not feasible to keep large groups together in captivity, because the food requirements alone would be prohibitive. What's more, they are very territorial and in the wild will mark territories as much as 40 miles across. If they are kept any closer together, they will soon become unhappy and start fighting for dominance. Next is their violent nature, which means that humans can never get too close. Even ones that have been tamed must be treated with extreme caution. No matter how much control someone thinks they have over a tiger, it's still a wild animal at heart and can always attack. They are very unpredictable. Trainers are often mauled by their tigers even after spending every day for years with them. This species simply never give up full control. Breeding desired qualities across generations has therefore eluded any aspiring tiger keepers, and they remain undomesticated. Number 3. Bears While there are only eight different species of bear, they are found everywhere across North America, South America, Europe, and Asia. As such powerful animals, these omnivores would be invaluable if they could be domesticated, but there is a lot to do with the nature of bears that makes this task impossible. There are a few traits that animals need in order for them to be domesticated, and bears miss out on most of them. First is the need to be efficient eaters, but as omnivores, bears need to eat a lot of meat to survive, something that would be difficult to provide if they were living with humans. Like rhinos, bears have a long gestation and growth rate, which means it would take a long time to breed desirable characteristics, and they are also highly resistant to breeding in captivity. Bears are fairly solitary animals, so it's difficult to keep a large number of them together, making it even less likely that they'll breed and trickier to get them to accept a human as the dominant one. While they have been kept in zoos and used in the circus for hundreds of years, bears are meant to roam and are made for the wild. Number 2. Dolphins Dolphins are known as some of the most intelligent animals, so you'd think that it would be easier to domesticate a dolphin than other animals, but the reality is far from it. First, of course, is the issue that dolphins live in the ocean, so they aren't able to be kept close to humans anywhere near as easily as horses or dogs. We have, though, kept dolphins in enclosures and taught them to perform tricks, but this is a far cry from true domestication. Dolphins are clever, but their intelligence is for the ocean. While they do show personality traits similar to the more intelligent primates, such as social cognition and the recognition of symbols, they aren't so easy to convince to follow commands, and they don't do so well in captivity. The idea that they are partially domesticated has no scientific basis, 
and captive dolphin breeding programs are based more on opportunity than by selective breeding, something that's vital for domestication. Ones born in captivity are no different in terms of instinctual behavior than those born in the wild, but that's maybe not such a surprise, considering the domestication of dogs took much longer than we've been keeping dolphins. The ethics of trying to do this with dolphins are, of course, an issue, and the amount of work it would take to try and domesticate them would never be palatable to the public, and so will probably never happen. Number 1. The Hippopotamus The hippopotamus is arguably the most dangerous animal in Africa. Despite being mainly herbivorous, hippos have developed effective protective measures to enable them to survive in the wild. They are highly aggressive and often charge at humans and boats after perceiving them as threats. Some individuals have been successfully kept in captivity and even seen as pets, but there are often stories of owners who have begun to trust these animals too much and paid the price. They apparently make great guard animals though if you don't want anyone on your property. This hasn't stopped attempts being made to domesticate hippos though. In the 19th century, the U.S. Congress thought that they had found a way to combat a national meat shortage and an ecological crisis by introducing hippopotamus ranching. They were to be imported from Africa and kept in the bayous of Louisiana, where they would eat a species of invasive water hyacinth that was destroying the environment. Unfortunately, the plan didn't come to pass, because they soon found out that hippos were not easy to tame and keep under control. Instead, the landscapes were engineered into more pasture for already domesticated animals, and the plan was scrapped for good. Good thing, too, otherwise Louisiana could have a dangerous invasive species running around. Just look at what happened in Colombia with Escobar's wild hippos. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.